The many and varied programs of the Department of Interior share some common components. One of these is the varying degree of risk which is present during the accomplishments of all tasks. Utilized properly, aviation can be a most valuable asset. However, used incorrectly or without the proper safety constraints, the results can be devastating. Risk assessment, the identification and evaluation of hazards and dangers must be a mandatory element of our decision-making process. Assessment of the risk associated with special use flying missions will often involve the conflict between efficiency, effectiveness, and safety. It is imperative that each of you evaluate all hazards associated with proposed flights and that your decisions, commonly referred to as go-no-go no go decisions, be made knowledgeably utilizing all available informed expertise. We oftentimes get so involved in our own little worlds that we overlook or disregard the knowledge and expertise available from outside sources. Uses for airplanes and helicopters that are new or untested in your organization may be common practice in other agencies. Let's take advantage of this learning curve and not reinvent the wheel needlessly. There are no magic formulas that produce steadfast answers in the analysis of risk. Instead, the process is very subjective and directly related to the specific task. The areas of risk that are associated with the special use flying conducted by the Department of Interior can be broken down into five major groupings. These include the pilot, aircraft, support, environment, and time. Let's look at each of these elements individually to better understand what type of information we should gather to make our assessment. The pilot. Obviously, a very instrumental element of any flight is the pilot. We first must make sure that he or she is approved and carded for the special use operation that we are considering. Where did the pilot gain their experience in flying this type of mission? When was the last time they flew this type of special use? These are the type of questions that will assist you in your assessment and will establish a very important information sharing and communication link between the pilot and government personnel. Supplying the pilot with written standards that cover the particular objectives and goals for the program that the flying supports is another critical part of the preparation process. Anything that you can do to build a strong bond and promote a team concept between pilot and observer will assist you in the management of risk. The aircraft. What is a proper aircraft to accomplish your task? Fixed wing? A helicopter. And how should it be configured? Wheels? Skis? Floats? Single or twin engine? And what special equipment will be required? Such as a cargo hook? A water bucket? Or possibly a camera mount or tracking antenna? The answer to all of these type of questions will have an impact on the operation and in turn on the components of risk. Again, it must be emphasized that we must utilize all available expertise and guidance as we answer these questions and make our go-no-go -go decisions. Support. The aircraft that we choose for our special use flight will generally require some kind of support. This support might be provided by the vendor or by the government depending on ownership, procurement method location of the project, and etc. Probably the most common support service is fueling. Other examples of support would be fuel maintenance, ground power units, parking and tie down. Our primary concern here is to assure that any persons involved with providing the support are qualified and that materials and equipment used are proper for the specific aircraft. If regulation or guidelines are published for that specific support function, follow them. Make sure that you consider and plan for all of the support functions that will be associated with your project when assessing total risk. The timely availability of those support functions will be most important to remaining on schedule. Environment. 
An important element of any mission planning and subsequent risk assessment is the analysis of the environment where the flying is to take place. This may seem like an insignificant item of concern to those with limited aviation knowledge. However, failure to give this factor adequate attention has been a contributing component in several of the department's accidents. Extreme heat or cold has a very detrimental effect on the aircraft as well as its performance. Terrain and vegetation must be evaluated. Is the flight in mountainous terrain? Is there the possibility of inclement weather such as rain or snow or possibly icing conditions? It is important that you make sure you identify all of the environmental factors that may present a hazard to the flight and give them knowledgeable consideration as part of the risk assessment. Time. Just how urgent is the mission? Other than life-saving situations, there are very few, if any, programs that justify execution without proper and complete planning. Oftentimes, the pressure of getting the job done clouds our common sense and prompts us into situations that greatly compromise safety. It's getting dark. Let's hurry and get one more flight in. I have to have the aerial photos by tomorrow for court. The birds are migrating, and if we don't count them today, our database will be destroyed and a thousand other reasons why the flight must proceed without taking the time to evaluate the risks and properly prepare. It is essential that you start your planning process soon enough to allow for a complete analysis, including time, for any unforeseen delays. Any one or combination of the five major elements that we have discussed can increase the risk until it becomes unacceptable and the mission is canceled. Again, it must be emphasized that the person or group that makes these decisions be trained and have an in-depth knowledge and understanding of the subject. A risk assessment should always include an analysis of alternative ways of accomplishing the task. These options might range from using the same aircraft, but different flight maneuvers, to a totally different mode of transportation. Take the time to communicate with others to learn about new or modified ways of utilizing aviation resources in the accomplishment of program requirements. Open and frequent communication with your national, regional, state and local aviation managers along with the Office of Aircraft Services staff can greatly assist you in the analysis, planning and execution of your flights. These sources of aviation expertise also can be most valuable in your appraisal of options. No assessment of risk can be complete without a judgment of the liability that will be incurred as a result of your decision and subsequent actions. Obviously, we could do nothing and substantially limit our liability, but this is an unreasonable approach. Instead, the goal should be rational, well thought out plans based on knowledgeable decisions and supported by trained, experienced, and competent personnel. Also, we must have written standards and approved procedures and ensure that the necessary safety equipment and clothing are available and utilized. Good old common sense will serve us well if we pay attention. The rules and regulations are there for a reason. Follow them. If they present a major problem or could better serve the intended purpose if modified, don't ignore them. Go through the proper channels to effect change. Each of you can be a key element in this process. Risk assessment is an important factor in the analysis and planning process. The subjective examination of physical hazards and operational procedures is a key element in the accident prevention effort. As we have discussed, there is no rigid formula that will ensure the correctness of your go, no go decisions. Instead, the analysis must be a systematic and informed evaluation of facts and conditions that pertain to that specific situation. Determine where the specific special use aviation activity that you are considering ranks in the hierarchy of flight activities. From using caution, to demanding, to extremely demanding and hazardous. It is important that you understand just where your flight activity falls on this scale and that you exercise appropriate discretion. Make sure that you utilize the wealth of information that is available in the department as you work towards your decision. And in closing, let me leave you with these final thoughts. If you should choose to undertake the special use flight, make sure that only those individuals that are absolutely necessary for mission accomplishments are on board the aircraft, and that each one understands their responsibility. Viewing the special use video that covers your particular activity can greatly assist you, and should be a mandatory requirement for anyone that is involved operationally with the flight.
Also, although the pilot in command is the final authority, all participants are responsible for enhancing the safety of the flight. Aviation safety and aircraft accident prevention in the Department of Interior is based upon the conceptual philosophy that all aircraft accidents can be prevented. Risk assessment is fundamental to this prevention effort. Thank you for your attention and have a safe and successful flight.